I assure you, I will not make a sucking joke throughout this entire video because I think that doing that with a robot vacuum is kind of, it's low hanging fruit and no one should really make that joke anymore. Instead, I offer up an alternative phrase, reverse blowing, totally better than sucking. What's up YouTube, Jason here with By My Bits, and in today's video, I'm talking about another robot vacuum, this one again from Roborock. This is the S4. And while I don't review a ton of vacuums on this channel, I do still find them fascinating because, well, they just clean up when you're not even there, or at least they can. I mean, this one can. So here we are again, Roborock sent over this unit for review about three months ago. There's been a little bit of a thing going on, but I feel a little bad because it's taken this long. But in my defense, I did want to at least have accurate test results. Testing in the form of can this thing perform the way it's supposed to do? So three months later after getting the product, let's dive into this video. So this is the Roborock S4. It has a reverse blowing capacity of 2000 Pascals. It has built-in LiDAR or laser navigation with real-time mapping technology, giving you the ability to not only create a map, but also save and revert to old maps. It has a built-in 5200 milliamp hour battery with 150 minutes worth of cleaning run time. In larger spaces, it has the ability to automatically recharge and restart its cleaning. And and is best suited for hardwood floors or low to medium pile carpet. And a major point I want to hit on this review is that low to medium pile carpet recommendations. See, the Roborock S4 is definitely meant for hardwood floors or very thin or low pile carpet. It's supposed to technically be able to handle medium pile carpet, but in my experience during my testing, I kind of sort of had some issues with that. To save you from the extended long version of this story, this all started off with when I got the unit, I tried to run it and I could not get it to run a complete uh, cleaning time without having to manually restart it on the app multiple times during a cleaning session. I was in direct communication with Roborock, submitting videos, letting them know the situations in which each time the Roborock vacuum was trying to run and then just randomly stop somewhere on a carpet. And after a little bit of time and probably some testing on their end, Roborock did release some firmware and the vacuum actually did get much better. But that doesn't mean that it actually fixed it, it just made it much better. You see, in my house, both upstairs and downstairs, I have a medium pile carpet. But my carpet's not really that new, so the higher traffic areas, it's more of a low pile carpet rather than a medium pile carpet. And the vacuum didn't have any issues with that. But when it got to the fluffy stuff, it just kind of stalled out, like it didn't know what to do. And now with the update, I can handle my upstairs carpet for the most part without any kind of issues. The only issue I ran into is when I brought it down into the basement where there's a lot of different areas that have not really seen that much traffic and thus the carpet is, well, it's true medium pile fluffy carpet. I don't know exactly what it is with the medium pile carpet, but the, the Roborock S4 has one of the best mapping technologies built into it out of any vacuum I've used. Granted, I haven't used a robot vacuum this expensive before. I was still very impressed, even from the previous version that I have, the Roborock E20 mapping system. I mean, this thing knows where all the walls are, maps it out, it knows where it is, and it's able to go directly back to its star charging station without you know bumping into the walls or just trying to find and or stumble its way back. So that is one of the things I can say is that this has the most advanced mapping system that I've ever experienced in a robot vacuum. I'm impressed with it. It's great. I have literally zero complaints about its ability to know its surroundings and navigate throughout it. The only thing I don't like, and you can see in this demonstration screen recording that I took, is that on medium pile carpet, it just kind of derps out a little bit. I don't really know what it does. It's just kind of fumbling around and it doesn't actually know how to find its way. Now throughout this cleaning process in my basement, when it gets to the higher traffic areas, the, the carpet's a little bit thinner because it's more walked on, it actually doesn't have a problem. It creates a grid and it vacuums like it should. It never stops randomly and tells me that the thing is jammed. It just does what it's supposed to do. But in any kind of a fluffy carpet environment where the carpet's either newer or just not used as much, it just constantly stops and it requires me to go into the Roborock app to say, you're not stuck, start cleaning again. I don't have to move it, I don't have to clean anything, I just, I just have to tell it to start cleaning again. But when you're trying to run the vacuum through an entire floor plan and it stops, let's say, two or three dozen times, that pretty much, in my opinion, makes it unusable. Now, like I said, I do have the Roborock E20 upstairs, and that is something that has been running literally every two days since I've owned it. And with the exception of a few times, it found a creative way to get itself stuck, and I have to go find it in my house. 
it's been a very reliable vacuum. And the sad thing is, is that I believe that this thing is actually way more powerful and way more capable than the Roborock E20 because I've seen this thing jump over some crazy stuff. I mean, I put it down in my basement. It was crawling up things and it actually kind of sort of destroyed my little miniature studio that I have over there where I was building computers. Came home and this thing just annihilated and knocked over some of my lights. I mean, it has the power and it can jump and get over a lot of different things pretty easily. But for some reason, you put it on fluffy carpet and it just kind of derps out and just has no idea what to do. But this thing does have 2000 pascals of reverse blowing power, which is about 200 more than my E20. And I'm using this as a direct comparison because my first initial test, getting everything to run the way it should, I basically ran the E20 a full run upstairs, then ran this thing directly after it, and I still had half a bin worth of stuff picked up off the floor that the E20 missed. Which tells me that either a combination with the whole new bristle system, because they have like thicker or more bristles uh, on the little spinny thingy down there, or the extra reverse blowing capacity that it has, it was able to capture more stuff off the floor than the Roborock E20 was. So I was definitely impressed by its overall performance. And Roborock actually has an S5 and an S6 version that has the same reverse blowing capacity that this thing does. I'm not really sure if the S5 or the F6 has issue with medium pile carpet like this thing does, but still they're kind of sort of in the same weight class. So I want to compare them. One thing that I can't can say though from using the old Roborock to the new Roborock is something they've done is really improve their app experience. Before you go through an app called Me Home or something and it's like an app that's a general use app meant to use uh, a wide variety of different products. So it wasn't specifically for Roborock vacuums or dedicated to vacuums. So in my experience, it just felt a little clumsy. But Roborock actually released a new app, a new app that I used with this and it's a very robust app. Although some things are kind of uniquely placed and I think they should be rearranged, but overall it's still a great experience with the new app. Being able to look at a map, be able to add no-go zones is another huge selling feature for me on this E4. I mean, I can actually go on the map and put, you know, a digital wall and say, don't go past this point. For example, in my basement, when I ran it, when I first did my initial test, this thing was ramping up over all my power cords. It unplugged a bunch of stuff. I was like literally surprised that it made it, but I figured after that, I was like, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on in the studio here. The last thing I need is a robot vacuum just wreaking havoc while I'm away. So I was able to add a digital wall to tell the robot vacuum not to go in here. And if this thing actually reliably worked, hopefully it will in the future with a firmware update, I could probably be a little bit more specific saying, you know, avoid like the camera and the, the lights and things like that and just focus on this open area behind me. With the app, I actually have the ability to set different zones and mark things off. I mean, I can either block them off with the wall or I can actually draw a little square zone and say, don't go here. And once the S4 has completed its cleaning cycle through your entire floor plan, it will actually create a map that allows you to do this. Although I will give you a little idea, Roborock, I mean, I'm just throwing this out there. Maybe there should be like an advanced exploring mode where you could set this thing to go faster and just explore its surroundings and build a map and not actually do any reverse blowing, right? It's just, just exploring. I think that would be a neat feature. I found myself doing that, turning on low power and just, you know, letting it run and telling it to go to a spot and start cleaning and go to another spot and start cleaning because I wanted to build, you know, my little zone and, and my rooms and, and set no-go walls and things like that. By the way, the whole 150 minute runtime is on the low setting, which is silent. You have medium, you have standard, and you also have turbo. you're going to run turbo. I mean, who wouldn't want the maximum reverse blowing power that you could possibly squeeze out of a robot vacuum? Also, I kind of like the design of this one. This has kind of like a halfway see-through thing here, so you can kind of sort of peek down if you're in a well-lit environment and see how full it is. But most of the time, I just lift this thing up anyways. I don't know what the capacity of this thing is, but it holds about I don't know, that much worth of stuff. By the way, this thing got like a quarter of the way through my basement and it was just packed, like overflowing, packed, full of stuff. I, I don't know why I told you that, but you know, that's a thing. 
But opening this up allows you to see some of the instructions here. You got your power, you got your home button. Uh, pretty much everything is controlled by the app with this though. But on a plus side, you can set it up to automatically clean during a certain time on certain days, or if you're just at work and you want to remotely start your vacuum, you can always log into the app and remotely control it from anywhere in the world that you have an internet connection. The only thing I don't like, and this carries over to the other robot vacuums that I have, although I do appreciate the technology, is this little bump on the top. See, this caused issues with my couches upstairs. Basically, it's short enough to go underneath the couch, but tall enough on this little bump to get caught on the couch. The same problem I had with the E20. It's just, they put this up here to have an advanced mapping technology thing going on, and it just adds another little bump. And in my case, it allowed it to get stuck underneath the couch. But going back to what I said before, that's where the mapping technology comes in because the first time that happened, I already had a map and I was able to draw a little no-go zone around the couch because it's not gonna be able to clean underneath it anyway. So there's no reason for it to even try. And I kind of touched base on this a little bit earlier, but apparently with the S4, it has a new bristle design under here on the brush. This is supposed to be a little bit thicker, a little bit more concentrated. I have heard online that the thinner stuff can sometimes clean maybe a little bit better, but when I directly compare this to the E20, I had a better experience with this. So is it the bristles? Is it the reverse blowing you know, power that made that difference? I don't know, maybe a combination of both. Either way, it's a thing. And it also, of course, has its normal little spinning side brush here to help clean out some of the corners. Although in my experience, robot vacuums never, even with this stuff, gets into the corners very well. I mean, this thing's not gonna deep clean your house or anything, but it'll help. So in the end, I think that the S4 is actually a fantastic robot vacuum with a lot of ability, great mapping technology, and overall a great capacity to clean. Its only downside is its firmware. It just, it gives up way too easily and it stops randomly in the middle of a carpet for absolutely no reason and only requires you to restart it on the app, but not actually have to physically move or change anything. But if you were in an environment with either hardwood floors or low pile carpet, this thing would be a rock star. It knows where it is, knows where it's going, and it knows how to get back home with a direct route, which believe it or not, is actually kind of a big deal. With my other vacuums, they just sometimes fumble around and they hit up against the wall and they're trying to figure their way back and they really have no idea where they are. They have a general idea, I guess, but they don't really know where they are. So there's still a little bit of fumbling around for robot vacuums to get back to their base if they don't have advanced mapping technology with some kind of a memory to tell them where they are. With this thing, it doesn't matter where it stopped, it just makes a beeline for the charging base and it's it's been perfect. I mean, it's probably one of the more impressive things I've ever seen in a robot vacuum so far. Charging. If only it would be able to handle medium pile carpet a little bit better. Well guys, if you wanna find up-to-date information and probably some more technical specifications, check out the links in the description down below. This Amazon link will give you the information that you want, like how much this thing costs right now. Of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, post them down below. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.